On today's show, the guys talk with David Hay, ambassador with Callisto, the free online interactive tool which teaches grades 5 to 12 students coding and computational thinking skills. There's an East Initiative update, all that and more up next on Edutech Guys. Yeah. You're listening to the Edutech Guys, edutechguys.com. Hello and welcome to EduTech Guys. I'm David Henderson. Hey, I'm Jeff Madlock. Yeah, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for uh, downloading this latest episode. I, I can't remember what episode we're even on right now. Season 5, episode uh, 19. 19. Yeah, yeah. So don't forget, put on your fancy dress and head out to the website and look up www.edutechguys.com. Said that really fast, like I was running out of air. You did. <laughs> take, take a deeper breath. Next my, time. my air tank compressor's offline yeah, back here, so like, I gotta, two, gotta, gotta hook up your oxygen. I've only got a third of a lung run in here. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so yeah, I say it every week. Go out to Google, type in Edutech guys. You're gonna find us there in our fancy dresses, staring right back at you, going, "Hey there, how you doing? Listen That's to right. us, yeah." So you got to put on your fancy clothes like they did, like, like they used to get on the airplane back in the olden days. Oh, you know, I was watching the show just the other day and they were, it was, you know, the olden days. And I was like, you can park a car in between those seats. They had so much yeah. Room. Yeah. It's like, get in the chairs, put the kids in the floor. They can sleep down there. You know, I don't know why that changed into a, you know, a Jewish lady accent <laughs> yeah. from Brooklyn, but it did. But, you know, that's, I mean, you can put tons of people in between the seats oh, yeah. and the seats were like lazy boy size, you know. And, yeah. and they still got 800 people on a plane. I don't know how that happened. Uh, yeah, I don't so. know how they did. <laughs> you know, well, not I, everybody sat in a seat. Well, and I, people, think it's, you know. I think it's, yeah, because you can stand and people are standing around smoking, having a drink. Hey, what's going on? Yeah, We're taking off. I'm good. I'll just lean with the plane. <laughs> <laughs> <That's right. laughs> well, you know, what's funny is, though, is they, they make it look like everybody's just in there talking. But, dude, but the really funny part is the, the motors on those planes are going, Because <laughs> yes. we're, we're flying in jets that are compressed, at, you, know, that, yes. you know, and we're still hearing, <laughs> yeah. you know, so I know the planes are going, Wah! yeah, and okay. they're all going, I don't know, where are we going to go when we get there? I don't know, it'll be fine. You know? <laughs> exactly. You well, know that didn't happen. Well, and, and you know, it's funny, we're talking about this. I just got back. I just flew in from Phoenix and boy, are my arms tired. Um, but uh, talk, let's talk about old school. Um, but uh, no, but I did. I just flew in from Phoenix from a conference that I was uh, at over there. And oh, it's. I don't understand how anybody holds a conversation on an airplane. Yeah, it's too loud. I I, I can't hear a thing. I can't either. It's just like white noise. Uh, uh, they turn the amp up to eleven. You know, it's like the you know, yeah, spinal yes, tapping. Spinal tap. Turn eleven. I, That's right. Everybody gets spinal tapped when they sit in the airplane seat. Welcome to the Edutech guys. We're talking about <laughs> educational things like flying yeah. and, and spinal tap. <laughs> <laughs> I happen to know that most of you out there are getting ready for the old Christmas break coming around. So yeah, I must. We're about a week, a week and a half a away. Wicka 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 That's stuck in my mouth now. Why don't we go away from Christmas break? Um, hope you have some great stuff coming on. It's going to be an interesting Christmas break with the, with the holidays falling on Wednesdays, like in the middle of the weeks. Yeah. It is, you know, just seems kind of okay. With their, usually it's near a weekend, so, you know, you got this kind of weekend. For those other people that aren't in education, they don't get off, you know, two <laughs> yeah, weeks. Yeah, that, are, that are listening to us complain about <laughs> yeah. the time we're going to get off, right? You know, I, I was talking to someone the other day, and they go, well, we just get off Christmas Day. Ooh. Yeah. That's going to hurt. <laughs> Well, we've got two weeks off. So. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So, yikes. We see your commitment to Christmas here, don't we? I, I will tell you, though, the, the biggest issue uh, in terms of, of trying to get just everything together and, and ready and figure out what's going on it has been that, you know, Thanksgiving came very late this year. Oh yeah, that's and so true. Christmas is we lost a week, like a we? whole week. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's really and it really makes a big difference. I, I don't I don't care you know what your current role is, no matter where you work, whether it's in education or not. When you miss that week of yeah. potential shopping, <laughs> man, you talk about freaking out, man. I'm just so glad. I, you, <laughs> but you then get, again, yeah, you know, Amazon two days. Yeah. I got it. Thanks. In my case, twenty two cents can only go so far. So you know, <laughs> that's right. that's, well, there's that too. So when you're out there getting ready to do your your Christmas shopping, if you have young kids or you think about your students today's going to be a really great show we've got david hay who's an ambassador with callisto and they're talking about um the way they can help your kids and your teachers uh, get more coding and computational thinking data analysis and stuff like that into the classroom which is really cool and i mean that's a big deal a lot of people are going to get amazon alexas and google homes and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff this year and they're going to learn about skills and they're going to learn about programming those devices whether 
they really get into like building their own skills for it or if they still want to teach Alexa to turn on Spotify and play, you know, this, that or another or right. turn on the, I, the turn on my lamps downstairs or turn them on in the, the living room or, you know, turn the kitchen dishwasher on. Right. Same thing. It's all a process. Yep. It's all, you know, computational thinking. It's all, you know, that kind of big deal. And that's where we are. That's where we're actually working our way backwards. You know, I, I think that it's interesting to think about how um, our our parents and grandparents and great grandparents might have worked in a factory line or something like that. They understood the process of this has to happen before this can happen. Mm -hmm. You know, even doing, you know, the books the old way, you know, with a spreadsheet and a calculator and a pencil and that kind of thing, there was a way that everything had to work. And we kind of got to a way where we, we took out a lot of that. We let the machines do that for us. We forget that somebody still has to tell those machines how to do that for us. And that's where our kids are. Yeah. Well, yeah. and and it's interesting to me that in a lot of um, coursework, especially from my experience in like math classes, you know, when we went to school, it, you know, you started at page one and you went basically through as far as you could before the semester ran out. <laughs> exactly. uh, now, you know, it, it, it jumps all over the place. And and when when I've been working with my daughter this semester with college algebra and, and her professor really jumps all over the place. And I'm just like, this makes no sense. I don't understand. But what's weird about that is that even though to me it looked like we were jumping all over the place, when it was all said and done, it actually lined itself out to the end. kind of what it needed to be <laughs> so that when we got to the end, we understood, at least I did anyway, I understood some of those concepts better, which says a lot for me because I did not do well in yeah. college algebra the first three times. This time, though, taking it with my daughter <laughs> made all the difference in the world. So It, it just shows that you know we, we learn a lot about education as we keep learning to teach education. Yeah. To teach better. Yeah. Uh, and I think that that's interesting that the old day of start here and go there. Yeah. Well, we ran out of time. We'll try again next time. <laughs> you know, <laughs> now we realize, oh, wait, I can take the parts of the whole and I can teach them in this order and still get to the same And still get to concept. the same place. Yeah, maybe yeah. quicker. Yeah. So maybe that's the whole deal. Right, hey, but I'll tell you what, let's find out how you can do that. And we'll tell you what, we'll jump out to the interview right now. So I'll tell you what, we're going to go listen to David Hay and the interview we had with him about Callisto. And we'll be right back after that. Hey, welcome back to the EduTech Guys. We're really excited to have our next guest on the show today. Yeah. We're going to let him tell us who he is and where he's from and all that kind of good stuff. So here we go. Hi, my name is David Hay. I'm normally a teacher and occasionally a consultant. And I'm actually taking a year off from teaching to work for a nonprofit on something called the Callisto Project. Cool. So let's talk about the Callisto Project. Can you give um, a quick elevator pitch for our, our educational listeners, uh, listeners of what that is, actually? Absolutely. So the Callisto Project is a Canadian federally funded project, uh, but uh, our resources are available worldwide, of course. But it's designed to foster thinking and data science within the regular K-12 curriculum. So not in the separate computer science programs or anything like that, but within regular junior high social studies or things like that. Oh, cool. That's really cool. So how did you come about uh, meeting them? How did you get involved with this? So I've been involved with some of the peripherally involved with some of the projects that Cybera has done in the past. And mm -hmm. so Cybera is a nonprofit technology accelerator here in Alberta, Canada. And so through my involvement, I uh, was introduced to the Callisto project and was asked to help with some of the steering a little bit last year while I was still teaching and I helped out with some presentations and some resource development and then they asked me to uh, to take a year off and to work on this full time. Oh, that sounds exciting. That sounds really exciting. Yeah. So I, I'm I, I'm curious. I'm, <laughs> I know we're going to talk about all, all the cool stuff that Callisto does, but I'm very curious about this taking a year off. So you're, you're, you, the, the district where you teach, the school where you teach, uh, I, I'm assuming that when your year off is done, you're going back there, yes? 
Yes, absolutely. So there's, I mean, I guess it'd be similar to an unpaid sabbatical. Mm -hmm. So they were uh, willing to give me a, a year long leave from from teaching to do this. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. That's very cool. That, that, that speaks highly of your of your teaching skills. So. Yeah, it does. Yeah. <laughs> And it is something that's still education related. So it's sure. not like I'm taking yeah. a year off to, uh, you know, start a start a company or anything like that. <laughs> sure, sure. Right. Yeah, <laughs> I'm it, take a year off to start a company. If it doesn't work, I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it's going to it's going to benefit the school in the long run. So that's really awesome. That's, yeah, really that's cool. very cool. Yeah. So let's let's jump into it. Let's talk about Callisto and let's talk about um, how it came about and why it's important, you know, to do what it's doing. Teaching coding, uh, computational thinking, uh, data analysis for students all that kind of good stuff so i think the 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 world is starting to realize that computers are important mm -hmm. and programming computers is important so having more students able to more people able to do that sort of programming is something that we want to foster beyond just sort of the introduction in hour of code or block based programming and th those things are great and uh, and I think that's a good introduction but where do we go from there Callisto is sort of aiming to be the the next step of using python in jupyter notebooks to give students more real world applications so we have actual data scientists who who do data science for a living involved in this project and uh, some developers involved as well to to help give us some ideas of what this should look like and uh, how to foster these skills and we see a lot of uh, a lot of districts a lot of uh, areas around the world are incorporating computational thinking skills into their curricular outcomes. And so we're hopefully in the process of doing that here and places like the UK and California and, and many other places have been, have been leaders in this uh, incorporating computational thinking skills. Awesome. So it's it, the way I kind of hear it in the way uh, from my research, it's, uh, you know, I like to hear the words Python. I like to hear the words of, of, of heavier <laughs> languages that these students aren't just being taught the basics of coding. They're being taught something they can walk away with and take to the next level. So it, it's really it's it's an accelerator of, of a sort, really, is what it comes down to. Yeah, absolutely. And, and giving students the opportunity to do more of these things and, and helping teachers to introduce these things as well, because not a lot of teachers have the expertise in Python. So the, these are some things where they can say, well, I'm teaching grade eight social studies. Uh, I will incorporate this. Would you survive the Middle Ages sort of uh, <laughs> activity that makes use of statistical modeling and uh, mathematical operations in Python? You know, I think what's interesting is, is that, so I'm seeing lots of aspects of design thinking coming into play here. Um, and that's a really big deal, whether you're trying to survive the Middle Ages or create the newest app that, you know, helps me get my groceries you know, quicker. Uh, that's uh, I, I see with it. So design thinking plays a lot of a role for teaching the teachers how to use that in classroom, I'm guessing also. Yeah, absolutely. And actually, that's something that we're really focusing on is working with teachers to to develop their expertise to develop resources. And so we can we can develop all sorts of great things and uh you know, have these resources available that people can download and use. But where it really makes a difference is when teachers can start making their own things, when teachers can sit down and write a Jupyter notebook and uh, do a little bit of coding with, with us holding hands or with our, you know, our tutorial resources holding their hands a little bit to, uh, to get them up to speed on doing that sort of thing. So uh, for the folks out there that, that may not know when you know, you've referenced Jupyter Notebooks a couple of times, what what is the Jupyter Notebook versus, I don't know, any other kind of notebook? I mean, is it like an actual <laughs> is, it, is it like a laptop notebook or are we talking like paper notebook? No, that's a good point. We probably should have defined that a while ago. So <laughs> a Jupyter Notebook is sort of like a, a, a document, whether it's a Google Doc or a Word document or something like that, where it's a digital document that includes the ability to format text. You can make things bold and include links and things like that. But you can also have cells within that document that are live Python code or R or Julia or other languages. So we've chosen Python. So the, the code will then run in that cell and it can be interspersed with 
the descriptions about it or the background or things like that to, in sort of a, a literate programming sort of method, methodology. And this all can run either on a Jupyter server. And so we're running a Jupyter server and, and Google has Colab, uh, Amazon has uh, has one, IBM has mm -hmm. Watson Studio, things like that. So these Jupyter servers are places where you can run the notebooks or you can run them on your own your own laptop. You install Anaconda or something like that mm -hmm. and run a Jupyter notebook that way. So it's just basically a file that's easy to share. You can you can post it on Git, GitHub. You can give it to students through your classroom LMS or, or any sort of way like that. That's yeah. pretty cool. So as you're out there in the trenches, <laughs> working with teachers, working with students, um, how is it? How's the reception been? How, how, what what's what's your biggest um, what's the biggest thing you use to get students really excited about this? And and and, and adversely, I mean, also uh, teachers. How do you how do you get them excited about it? Uh I think I find that getting teachers I excited is maybe the harder part. Getting students excited is easy. I mean, we can just do something new and cool and uh, say, hey, we're going to do a little bit of programming. And they say, sure, let's program. Uh, but uh, getting teachers excited is problematic because teachers tend to be underwater in terms of their workload, mm -hmm. usually, that mm -hmm. they're, they're so busy. Uh, and don't have time for one more thing usually. So we're trying to have it as easy as possible for them to just implement one thing that, uh, and not a new thing, but okay, you're going to do the this math lesson on finding factors. Instead of doing it with a you know PowerPoint or on the whiteboard, let's try it in a Jupyter notebook and have the students write a little code or at the very least run a little co code and so have something that that plugs into what they're already doing. And so empowering teachers to use things to start and then to start making things is often very motivating for them. But there is the problem that you know hour of code and, and things like that are great because they they are very easy to get started with, but sometimes text-based languages, as you say, heavier languages, can be a little more overwhelming. Yeah. That we've had teachers say, oh, I'm, I'm not sure if this is the right session for me to be in, or yeah. I don't know if I can get to this this school year or something like that. Yeah. So it it's difficult, but it's uh, valuable. Yeah. Well, and I, to me, it, it sounds a lot of what, what you guys are doing um, and what Callisto uh, is working with teachers, getting them to incorporate the, the principles of coding and computer science in their regular curriculum is really right up the alley of what uh, the governor here in Arkansas set forth. He, he started it a couple of years ago and it was the same kind of not, not using those tools necessarily, but along this, along similar lines in that computer science tends to scare a lot of people just by saying the words computer science, right? <laughs> but if you take the concepts, right, uh, algorithms and computational thinking and some of the things that sound like these big, nasty, hairy words, and you show that you were doing this anyway when you had your, you know, when you were doing your sentences as to which came first and which came second and which came third, you've been having your kids write about how to tie their shoes and make peanut butter sandwiches since, you know, 1922. <laughs> Now we're just showing you that, hey, this is the exact same kind of thing that happens with computer science, just incorporating some new vocabulary and some new ways to achieve the same thing you've already been doing. Hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And it's just like you say, just a little bit of syntax to to incorporate things. Mm -hmm. I heard a great definition the other day. Uh, or not a definition, but a saying, if you can write out instructions to have a person do something, maybe you should consider having those same instructions for a computer to do something. And that's that's sort of what computational thinking in my mind is about. It's, it's designing problems that a computer can solve. Yeah. And yeah. That's so exactly it. breaking things... Yeah, breaking things down into parts and to, and making things reusable and generalizable and, and all of that. And it's a similar sort of thing with, with data science. Data science is, of course, all about getting as well. So uh, collecting data, cleaning it, and uh, telling a story with those uh, observations. So that's something that we want to foster as well. We well, you know and, and exactly here in the United States, you know, we're starting the, the census is in April. And so it's, it's a big time. What a great time to start using data science and, and talking about data science in our classrooms. 
the synthesis is yeah. about to happen. And there's so much, you know, social studies, history, mm-hmm. English, and mathematics. You know, there's so many places to use that. So that's a great thing. So that's a, I think that's my next question and kind of you know help our listeners understand um, if they want to. So tell us the process of getting involved with Callisto and, you know, what what the varying uh, degrees of getting involved with Callisto is. You know, is there, what's the big one if we want to go all in or we want to just test the water just a little bit? What's what would be the, the, the process in that? Yeah, absolutely. There are a bunch of entry points for this. You can just go to our website, Callisto.ca, because we are in Canada, we like the .ca. <laughs> uh, and there are learning modules there. They're, they're tending, tending to be aligned to curriculum here, but, uh, you know, everybody's teaching the same thing for the most part. So you can usually teachers can find things that are interesting or applicable. So that's, that's an easy way to just start out and then download a notebook and run it on wherever you want to run it. Uh, the Callisto hub that we're running is certainly uh, an option that's freely available. It doesn't quite have the capacity that uh, something like Google or uh, IBM's uh, resources would have, mm-hmm. but, uh, or, I mean, you can run your own server if you want, by all means, but that would be one way to start or to suggest things mm-hmm. for the future. If you, if you have ideas about, oh, I would love to see a notebook that, you know, talks about the U S census data that just came out, that sort of thing. Uh, so have those sorts of things with curriculum ties already, because we, you know, we're always looking for things that would that would be useful for teachers. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, to start developing yourself, we'll be launching an online course uh, next month, probably, that uh, teachers will be able to go through. And it'll, it'll talk them through the basics of how to start a notebook, how to program in Python, and how to do a little bit of data science and things like that. And we're, we're going to be designing, hopefully, a couple of other online courses that uh, the teachers will be able to go through and uh, maybe have some uh, awards, not awards, badges that they can oh, get yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. for those, uh, all of that kind of thing. That's really cool. Yeah, I was just, um, <clears throat> some notes I made here. Um, the submit a proposal. I know you guys have, have that open. Um, and that's, uh, I think one just closed. That was November 1st. But the phase two, I think, is for the spring, isn't it? And that's that's sometime in February. So uh, that's a really neat one if you want to help fund you know, classroom uh, activities and things like that. I, I wanted to throw that out there because I noticed it on the website when I was doing my research. Yeah, absolutely. So because we are uh, funded by a Canadian grant program, we uh, we do have to stick to Canadian uh, sure. <laughs> things uh, in terms of uh, grant awards. But uh, if teachers or, or really anyone uh, is interested in either developing resources or offering workshops with uh, with this related content or getting involved in ways like that. There is a, a call for proposals, as you say, on the website. So we've had a lot of interesting things come in from that. We've had universities who want to get undergraduate students, both education and uh, sort of traditional STEM field, uh, mm-hmm. undergraduate and graduate students involved in resource creation or uh, indigenous communities that want to run summer camps with coding with their students yeah. or things like that. So all sorts of different uh, proposals and room for uh, a lot more coming up as well. Well, it sounds like Callisto is really pushing the envelope here. It's really cool. I'm, I'm, I'm glad we, we you know, it, I tell David all the time, we meet so many interesting people and so many interesting programs and products and services out there that we never knew about. The yeah. world is so huge that this massive diesel can fly right past you on the interstate and you never realize it. <laughs> so, uh, David, yeah. so uh, big question. If our people want to reach out and find out more, I like to give the opportunity to uh, go ahead and do the big plug right here. Where, how, how do they find you? How do they steal your information? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the easiest way is Callisto.ca and that will, that's our website uh, where it has, not all of the learning resources, but uh, the sort of a curated selection of them and some other things there and contact information, uh, Twitter and Instagram and uh, all of those sorts of social media things that are on there. Uh, they can also uh, follow me on Twitter, Mr. Hay spelled with an I. So uh, I guess a little bit like Mr. Rogers, I'm realizing, M-I-S-T-E-H-A-Y uh, on Twitter. And uh, they can also just email. Email still works. Uh, the uh, I believe it's contact at callisto.ca, and that's a 
an address that people can get in touch to ask questions about the process or to uh, see how they can get involved. Cool. Yeah. And we'll definitely share that out on, on the social media. And it's, I'm glad to hear you say that. Uh, I didn't know people, I mean, email, it's, it's almost like it's kind of going the way of the dodo. I mean, we all use social media to contact each other now. So it seems like that's kind of not the preferred contact method anyway. So, but And it's interesting working with students too, that students often don't really, email is not their first choice of communication. In fact, they, they often you know, it's it's one step below voice calls. Why would why would you use that? Mm-hmm. Right. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, you know, that's really true. Well, and they Snapchat it, so it disappears. I don't understand that. Maybe maybe we're training our students to have a better re- uh, memory retention. But that's why Snapchat exists. So it yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> if it's not stored, you have to you have to, get, yeah, you have to right, pull it right, back you up. Remember, really that's right. <laughs> I've got to memorize this really quick. It's going to disappear. Right. So, hey, um, David, thank you for coming on the show. Uh, it's really great to meet you, and we hope to talk to you maybe in the spring and see how it's going with Callisto and uh, your ambassadorship working with for those guys. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me on and thanks for uh, having such a great show to share these sorts of things with your listeners. Appreciate Thank it. You. Hi there. I'm April Jackson and this is your East Update. This week we hear from East alum Mason Kessner and his experience in East. Okay. My name is Mason Kessner. I am actually this will be my uh, uh, six. 10, almost 14 years with East. Um, I, I started when East was, I don't know, maybe five or six years old um, in uh, Fort Smith at Southside High School. So I've been out of high school almost a decade and have been connected with East since. So it's, it's East's fault, mainly Matt Dozier's fault that I am the way I am. So we'll blame him. We'll take that. So you said you were at you were in East mm-hmm. and at Fort Smith, yeah. but you've decided to stay connected with them. Why? Yeah. I feel like for me, um, especially growing up, I grew up in private school, and the resources were limited. Um, I mean, this is back before like Apple had like Intel computers, um, and so we we no technology. And so when I transitioned to uh, Southside High School, uh, public school, we had an East program that was. Um, I think it it started uh, maybe two or three years prior to me getting there. Um, it afforded me opportunity that I, A, didn't know existed, um, but B, it, it put me on a career path that was almost contrary to what I thought I was going to do. And it allowed me to express creatively who I was in a way that I'd never had the opportunity to. Um, and for me, that set the course for kind of what I'm doing today. And so that, that was kind of my experience in East and how that has really forced me um, to do what I'm doing now. It, it set that foundation. If you're interested in learning more about our notable alumni and the way that East impacted them, visit our website at eastinitiative.org or follow us on social media at The East Initiative. I am April Jackson, and this has been your East Update. Hey, thank you so much to April Jackson and the folks over at the East Initiative for providing the update each week. Man, there's always some great stuff coming out of the East Initiative, and it really makes me happy. Yeah. Yeah. Good times. Good times. Good times. And don't forget to go out to the web, uh, www.edutechguys.com. Heck, just put us in that to the old search engine that's your your preferable search engine. Go, duck, go, whatever it is. I don't know. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Dog web pile. Web crawler. <laughs> Alta Vista. AOL has us right there on the front page. That's right. Go to compuserve.com. <laughs> you know what? Our new website at GeoCities is really doing well. <laughs> well, that just, does, that just evolved into a, a, a hateful bashing of web hosted. <laughs> of olden days. <laughs> no, really. Check us out on the web and check us out on social media. Let us know what you think of the show please be nice uh, we are uh, sensitive to those things <laughs> when we read them and we read them over and over again and cry in a dark room at least i do i don't know what you do david so <laughs> That's pretty much it. Is that pretty much it? Pretty much. It's been a great show. We want to thank uh, David uh, Hay for coming on the show and talking about with us about Callisto. Uh, yeah. Don't forget to check them out. Callisto, C-A-L-L-Y-S-T-O um, dot C-A. They're in Canada. Really cool hey. stuff. Hey. Hey, it's been a great show. It has. I'm Jeff Madlock. I'm David Henderson. We'll catch you next time. You've been listening to the EduTech Guys. EduTechGuys.com. <laughs>